Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf HaYemi, Meseches Zvachem Daf Kefiotes. We begin five lines off the top of the Amit Bowl, and I begin on Vechulu. In the Mishnah we learn an interesting thing, interesting phenomenon. Was it mutter to be makr of a private carbon in a private bummel, the privacy of your backyard? Well, it depends. What was going on otherwise? So in the Mishkan, you know, in the Midbar, when they had the Mishkan, of course, bummels were also. You bring your carbon to the Mishkan and nowhere else. However, Moshe Rabbeinu informs B'nai Yisrael, that's now, but once you enter Eretz Yisrael, and the Mishkan will be no longer, then uh, you'll have a central bama in Gilgal, and likewise, you can have your own private bamas throughout the land. But once they established a formal Mishkan, Mishkan Shilai, the bamas become Asr. Once Shilai is destroyed, and they move on to Noiv and Givain, the bamas become Mutur again. So it's back and forth and back. How do we know that although the bamas were Asr during Shilai's reign, they once again become Mutur once Shilai is destroyed? How do we know? You know what I mean? Tan Rabban, we have this passage where Moshe Rabbeinu is describing the sequence of events. Look, at this point, meaning once you enter Israel, you're free to use your private bombings. You know why? Because you haven't yet established a formal Mishkan, a formal Beis Hamikdash. Kilevasamato Adato, you haven't arrived up until this point. El Amunucha, to something called Menucha, a temporary, you know, resting place for the Shechina, and that's referring to. Shiloi, Velanachla, nor have you come to the permanent resting place of the Shechina, Beis Hamidash, and Yerushalayim. So the term Elamanucha, as we explained, is going on in Zu Shiloi. The term Nachla, that's going on in Zu Yerushalayim. La Machilkan, why did Moshe Rabbeinu separate them and refer to them as separate entities? What's the point? Ought oh, to tell you that only when Shiloi was standing, when Beis Hamidash was standing and onward, the bomb is become mutter, but in between, meaning once Shila is destroyed, you have that 57 years for Naive Givain, during those years, bomb is once again mutter. Even though they had been Asa during Shila. Loma Chilkan, why divide these uh, you know, errors in history? They lit in Heter ben Zelazet to indicate that there's a Heter of bomb is between these two um, periods. So again, during Gilgal, Bamis are Mutter, Shiloi Bamis are also never given their Mutter once again. And once the Besamidish is up and running, there's no more Bamis. Now, the Mishnah speaks about the time of Navi Givain. So, Kachim Kalam, you know, Shlamim, you can eat anywhere. Bechal Ari Yisrael throughout the entire land. Now, why is there no mention of Masar Shani? Masa Shani as well, you can eat uh, throughout the entire land. Amalei Rishlag Shlabi Yechem, Masa Shani, and Amalei Lisni. Amalei says, no, you can't um, eat Masa Shani only when there's a formal Eil Moed, a formal Mishkan, as opposed to the time of Noi Begin when it wasn't really a, a formal setup. Amalei says, like this, Master, regarding eating Masa Shani, that doesn't apply during this. Uh, Period, period in history. Because of Exeter Shava. It says the word Sham regarding eating Masasheni and Karbanis, and says the word Sham as well by the Arain, by the Holy Ark. Santa Sham is Arain al Edus. And we learn Ma'aran Kalyalfi that Masasheni is only active. You don't eat Masasheni when we have the Arain in place. Kivan the Arain since there was no Arain in place during Navikivan. As we learned yesterday, it wasn't Kiryasi Arim, it wasn't, uh, you know, in a formal setting in a, in a Mishkan. Given the Arim Lehavu, Master Nami Lehavu. So likewise, you don't have Master Shani during that time, you don't need it. Master Shani, Nami Lehavu. if that's the case, that is dependent upon the Arim, Yachim, Pesach, and Kachim Nami. What about eating other Karbanas, Pesach and Kachim? The Sham, because it says the word Sham by Karbanas. Sham by the Aran, me Aran Yalfi, they should learn from the Aran. And likewise, the Kivan, the Aran, Lehavu, since the Aran was not in its place, Inu Nami Lehavu, don't eat the other Karbanas either. The mission says otherwise. Amr Lehavu says, you know what? Actually, the Amr Lach, Hamani Rab Shimini. 
He says, uh, let me explain to you, uh, give you a different answer to your question. Why was Master Shani not applicable? Not because of the Gzera Shava, because that's going to generate a whole confusion. Rather, it's based on the fact that the, uh, the Mishnah here, who omitted Master Shani, is going like Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Hamani Rabbi Shimon, the Amor told us yesterday, even in a public Bama, even the public will not bring Karbanis that are obligatory, unless it's a Pesach, and other obligatory Karbanis that are time related, right? But, but Chaybos that are not time dependent, like, uh, Master Behemoth, the tenth animal, which one uh, you know, designates as a carbon, which is a chayva. He must do it, but it's not time related. You don't bring it in the general bama or the private bama. And what's an example of a, this type of carbon? Master Behemoth, right? The tenth animal. It's one of those chayvas uh, that are not time related and not applicable in a bama setting. And likewise, Master Shani from grain is connected, is interrelated with Master Behemoth from the same Pasuk. When Master Behemoth doesn't apply, likewise, Master Shani does not apply either. This discussion we connect Master Dagon, the grain master, the Master Behemoth to the animal master. And since Master Behemoth does not apply in a Bama setting, likewise, Master Shani. That answers your question why we omit Master Shani. Ask the Gemara. Okay, that's Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Shimon's opinion. But according to Rabbi Yudah, who told us yesterday that hey, you could even offer chayvahs that are not time related and therefore Master Behema is applicable so is likewise Master Shani going to apply as well? Mechlal, according to this, let's infer the Rabbi Yudah, according to Rabbi Yudah Karev you offer even Master Behema in, yep alright on, the Amar Abad of Rav Masna, Master Shani, Master Behema Nechalan, Benayi Vigivan, Lidiv Rabbi Yudah, according to Rabbi Yudah Master Shani is on, Master Behema is on ask the Gemara but how could you eat Master Shani? Um, you know, you bring it to Naive Givan, really? But you need to have uh, the fulfillment of the Pasuk. Pasuk by Master Shani says it has to be Lefne Hashem, right? But by Biro, you need the uh, the Makama Mishkan, the Miglish itself, right? How could you bring it to uh, to Naive Givun, which wasn't really a formal Migdash? Answers the Gemara, it was a, another variation of the Migdash. It worked. The left honey of Yasef. Didn't Yasef teach us? Shalish Biroi saying, there are three different types of Birois. Three different types of, you know, Shechina structures. During different points in history, they had it uh, set up differently. We have Shiloi, Venai Vegivain, Ubei Selame, and finally Ubei Samigdash. Who, Tani Law? Sir Yasef, who presented this price regarding the three levels of Biro, who Amarlan explained it further that the point of the price is to highlight Lachilas Master Shani Alib Darbida. That you can eat the Master Shani even in Venai Vegivain, even though it wasn't really a formal setup, but it, uh, it qualifies at Biro. It is a resting place for Shechina and sort of is on the same level to a certain extent as uh, Shiloh and Beis Hamikdash, which allows for eating Master Shani in its vicinity. Okay, so bottom line is during Navi Givain's period was uh, Master Shani eaten? So according to uh, Rabbi Shemino, according to Rabbi Dei, yes. By the Rishalai. Once they arrived at Rishalai they built Beis Hamikdash, the Bamis once again as we explained, my Shabbenu was telling them, look, right now you're free to be macro karbanis anywhere because you haven't yet arrived at Menucha or Nachla. Menucha is Zushiloi, at which point the Ibamis became Asra. And then afterwards, Bamis became Motor until they arrived at Yushalayim, where once again Bamis became Asra. Nachla is Yushalayim. As we find the Psukim, that in fact, uh, Nachla is synonymous with Yerushalayim. That's the final permanent resting place for the Shechina. Ba'imer ha'isali nachlasi. Ka'ar yibayar ba'imer ha'ayit sovo nachlasi li ha'ayit sovo. Divirei Rebid. So according to Rebid Huda, Menucha Shiloim, and Nachla is Yerushalayim. Rebid Shemin Aimer, actually, it's the other way around, just the opposite. 
Menucha to Yerushalayim, Nachlez or Shiloh. But Omer, as we find in the Pasuk, Zois Menuchos Yadi Ad, Poyeshev Kivisiya, that's in front of Yerushalayim. But Omer, Kivoch Hashem Metzion, Ival Meshev Lois, that's clearly Yerushalayim, Tzion. Whereas, um, Nachla, that's, uh, that's Shiloh. Says the Gemara, Bishlam, Elam Adam Menuchos or Shiloh. So certainly if Menucha is Shiloi and only Nachla is Yerushalayim, that explains the uh, sequence of the, uh, the Pasuk. First Menucha is mentioned, because that's the first phase. And then finally we have Nachla, which is Yerushalayim, so the setup makes sense. El Amar. But according to the other sheet, who says Menucha is Yerushalayim and Nachla is Yerushalayim, so the Pasuk should have switched around the sequence. Ela Nachla, first mention Nachla, which is Shiloi, and then Vela Menucha Mimbalit. That's how it should have said. Tachik Amar. Moshe Rabbeinu meant to say like this Look, you're still totally in the game. And therefore, you're free to mock your Karbanis in, in your private Bamais. Because, Lami Boye, not only haven't you arrived at the final destination at Menucha the Matis, you haven't yet arrived at Yushalayim, which is Menucha, you haven't even arrived at the first initial stage of. Of, 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 you know, of Mishkan, of formality, which is Shiloi. Ela filu, la nachla, even nachla, which is Shiloi. Nami lo matis, you haven't yet arrived there, so therefore you're free to be macro carbonates in your private bomb. Okay, so we have two shittas in terms of how to, you know, apply the terms in the, in the, in the Pasit. But in any case, according to both opinions, it was up, down, up, down, meaning <laughs> during Gilgal, the bombs were okay, Shiloi not, Nevi given yes, and Yerushalayim, and Bamas are usher again. However, we have dissenting views. Tana de Rabbi Shmuel, so the Mishmerish of Rabbi Shmuel, they learn differently. Zu v'zu shiloi. Actually, both terms, Menucha and Nachla, refer to shiloi. And what's the point of saying it this way? So the Mepharshim explain. According to the Rabbi Shmuel, the Bamis were mutter during all times in history, even today. Provided there's no standing, existing, formal Mishkun or Beis Only during the actual standing of Shiloh, or the actual existence of the Beis Hamikdash, other Bamis also. But after their destruction, even nowadays, after we had a Beis Hamikdash, Bamis are mutter again. So the Pasuk is saying, "Look, you haven't yet arrived at Shiloh." And the point is, the message is, when you have, while you have an existing Mishkan or Beis Hamikdash, Bamis are also. But otherwise, it's much. Rabbi Shim Bani Chai Oimer, Rabbi Shim Bani Chai, no, Zuv Zuv Yishalayim. Both terms, Menucha Nachla, refer to Yishalayim only. And Rashi explains, according to this shita, until Beis Hamidrash was built, Bamis are mutter. So all throughout, Shiloh, etc., Bamis are mutter. Says the Gemara, Bishleim el Mandamar Menucha zu Shiloh. Benachla zu Yishalayim, according to the first two opinions. So either Menucha Shiloh, Nachla Yishalayim, or the opposite, Inami Yifcha. That would explain the Pasuk. Hainu Dachsev el Menucha vel Nachla. You haven't yet arrived at Menucha. Nor at Nachla because the point is to highlight that each one, whether it's during Shiloh or during Yushalayim, during Yushalayim, during Yushalayim, Bamas Aras. El Olamad Amar Zuv is Shiloh. Or Zuv is Yushalayim, but according to the other two opinions, that they're both referring to the same phenomenon, both to Shiloh or both to Yushalayim, then why the repetition? Menucha, Nachla, Mabayla. should have just said, El Menucha, Nachla. Why split them? But the word El, El Amenuch. Ve El Anachla, which sounds like we're talking about two different things. Kasha, that's how we should say. Kasha, we leave it as an unresolved question. According to the Shita, that both are Shiloh, we understand why these terms are used to describe Shiloh. Menuch is because they finally rested from capturing. The Nocha Mekibush, and the word Nachla, the Palgu has some Nachlas, because that's where they finished dividing the land. As we have in the Pasuk, when Yeshua requested his portion, when uh, Yeshua uh, you know, finished dividing the, um, the, the, the land to the, to the nation, the Chalukah concluded in Shiloh. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, Shiloh is referred to with Menuch or Nach. El al Madam, Zu Vazu Yushalayim, but according to the opinion that both Menuch and Nach is Yushalayim. Why is that used to describe Yerushalayim? Bishlam, certainly the word Nachla, okay? Nachla Seilamim. It's an internal, uh, eternal uh, inheritance. Elo Menucha, my. My Menucha, what's the uh, term Menucha 
connected to Yerushalayim. Menuchas Oren, because that's where the Oren had its uh, finally had its um, came to its destination, to its resting place. Now, Now, certainly, if you say both at Yerushalayim, Avol Shiloi, Havishari Bamos. So, according to this opinion, the Bamos were mutter all throughout until they got to Yerushalayim. And even during Mishkan Shilei, Bamos were mutter. That explains the story with Manoyach, right? Shimshon's father, who was Makrav Karbanas on the, on the boulder out there. Hanu Dachsev, that explains the Pasav, Eikach Manoyach, right? He took the goat, as the Izim, as a Mincha, Vayal Al Tzor Hashem, he put it on the rock, and it was Makrav Hashem. Because Bamos were mutter, even though there was Mishkan Shilei. Elo Madam Azuzu Shiloi, but according to the other opinion, that once you get to Shiloi, your answer, Obama's have a Siran, my Veikach Manoyach, why did he do the Yakrova outside? What justification did he have? It was during Shiloi's reign. The answer is it was a one off. It was by special instructions from the, uh, <coughs> from the Malach, uh, and it was an exceptional you know, case. Okay, so we had. Tanad Verbi Shmuel, who said both are Shiloi, and Rabbi Shim Ben who said both are Yishalayim. And continues the Gemara, actually, Tanad Verbi Shmuel, the uh, Talmudim of Rabbi Shmuel's Yeshiva, switched ranks, they conceded, and they adopted the view of Rabbi Shim Ben Yechai. The Amaru says, Zubi Yishalayim, both, both terms refer to Yishalayim only. We see, man, have to remember what happened here. Mash Gavra, the uh, single person of Shim Ben Yechai, um, convinced them, brought them over the Garvi to the many. He brought the many over to him and convinced the uh, the opposing, uh, uh, you know, school of thought to adopt his position. That Menucha and Menacha both on Yerushalayim, and until Yerushalayim was uh, was established, the base was built. Bamis were mutter throughout. Okay, so we have several opinions in terms of when Bamis were mutter, and now Mishnah we learn, Bamis were only usher during Shiloi and during Beis Hamidosh and onward. But we have two more opinions. Some say that uh, Bamis were mutter until Beis Hamidrash was built, and onward, and onward it's, it's also, whereas according to Bishmoel, only as Shile was standing and as Yushalayim was standing, but after Churban Beis Hamidrash, or Churban Shile, Bamis were mutter again. Kala Kach. Okay, so in the Mishnah we learned that there are several levels of severity in terms of Shechting would be Makar Bekarban outside the Beis Hamidrash. So, just in general terms, if you have a, a carbon that was set aside, that you were magdish, when the bamis were already asr, and you were it outside during that same period, that's the most severe violation. There's an assay, positive commandment, lays assay, and even karas. But let's say he was uh, magdish when the bamis were asr. By the time he got around to it, the bamis became mutter. So, that's only a limited isr. Um, it's only a Mrs. Assay. Let's say the other way around. He was uh, Magdashe when the Bamis were were Mutter. Okay, by the time he got around to it, the Bamis became Asr. Mishnah says, there's an Assay and a Lois Assay without courage. So basically, three levels, right? Magdash and Makrib when things are Asr, Assay, Lois Assay, and Kuris. Magdash. When um, things are mutter and makrivet when it was asr, I say but let's say without chorus. Magdash when things are asr and makrivet when things are mutter, it's only an asse. So in the middle case where he was magdashit, when the bamas were mutter, and he was makrivet, when the bamas were asr, mission says only I say and let's say without chorus, says the Gemara one sec, Kalakach, Mechulo, Marfkahana, Loishon, that's only true of if he shechts it outside, then there's only I say let's say without chorus. But if in this case he's also makrivet, Okay, so not shechita, but he does halo. Kares tamim machayv, he gets kares as well. My time, why? The makrov aliyam timer, ala smuchan timer. Because the pasuk previously discussed this very case, where the hegdish occurred when the bamas were mutter, and the akrov occurred when the um, the processing occurred once the uh, bamas became master. And the pasuk there speaks about hakrova. And it goes on to speak about being makrib, and there's karis. Allah smuchan toimah, it's referring even to those previously mentioned, the one right nearby. This middle case, even in this case, true, shechita outside, there's no karis, but ha'allah, there is. Mask the rabba. Let's take a look at the spelling of the word. Miksi does it then say valeim with an ayin, which indicates that it's going back on that case? 
Aleim Ksiv. Aleim means to them, to the people. It's just referring to the people. Who says it's going on the other case? Void, furthermore, Tanya, we have a Brysa, which clearly tells us there's no curse. Even when he's Mala. A carbon. Outside when uh, the Hegdash took place, when the Bamas were Humutar. Our book, Lolis, in fact, he sets down four rules, four levels of violation. The highest level is, the most severe is, the highest level is, and the and the Allah took place when things were Asr. So this is the most severe. Harim Basay. Velois is in the Ishban Kurs. There's an Asay, Lois, and Kurs. One notch down is, which is the case that we're talking about now. The English took place when these were mutter. Shazat Rabbamis. By the time he got around to it, the Rabbamis became Asr. Shili was built, right? Vishachat Vihelo. Let's pay attention to the word. Vihelo. I did both. Shkita and Allah. Once the Rabbamis became Asr, Bishas Isra Rabbamis. What does the Brises say? Is there a curse? No. Harahim Bas say. Valaisa say. You limit to an Asay and Allah. say without curse. Vihem Baran curse. This is a direct, a direct, direct contradiction to Rav Kahan who says this curse for Malabachus in this case. Okay, let's just continue the price. A notch lower than that is Hikdisham Shas Isra Bomis. He was Magdashib when the Bomas were also, but by the time he got around to it, Bomas became Mutter again. Vishakat Vihala Bachutz. He did it outside. Vishasat Rabomis. In this case, it's the lightest transgression, Ariyen Base. There's merely an assay. Vain Ben, but like I said, there's no as like this. And finally the fourth case is where it's totally mutter, Hikdisham Shasat Rabomis, Vishakat Vihala Bashat Rabomis. Everything from beginning to end took place when the Bomas were mutter. Then uh, the light's green, perfectly fine. V'shachat vela v'shachat hatar abamis pater miklum. Interestingly, he calls it pater miklum. It sounds like it's it just exempt. It's an expression in contrast to the uh, liabilities in the previous cases. So. But really, it's motor, of course. In any case, this price is clearly contradicts Rav Kahana, Tiyufta, Rav Kahana, Tiyufta. In fact, it's a refutation. Ve'elu kach. And the Mishnah goes on to list items which set apart the Bama Gdoila from the Bama Ketana. For instance, during Gilgal, that a Bama Kedoyla, a central Bama, versus the uh, private Bamas in you know, people's backyards. So both are functioning entities, but there are many differences. Some practices only apply in the Bama Kedoyla, not in the Bama Ketana. For instance, smich, leaning on the animal before the Akrov, that only applies in Bama Kedoyla, not in the Ketana. Tachsev, why? Tachsev, Lufnei Hashem, Basamach. Smich takes place only Lufnei Hashem. In the presence of the central Shechina area, which is in the Bama Kedoyla. Likewise, Shkita Safan, the requirement of Shechti, Kachi Kachim, and it's Safan. Again, that only applies in the Bamak uh, not in the Bamak Tana. Tachsiv, Safan, that's only with Hashem, it's in front of Hashem, not in the privacy of your home. Matan is Saviv, the requirement to apply multiple blood applications to the sides of the Mizbech. Again, Tachsiv, Vizarach, and Mizbech, Saviv. And again, the Pasuk there speaks about Asha Pesach El Moed, it has to be the central place. Tnufa, waving of the parts of the carbon. Again, that only applies in the central area. Dechsev, veinim akoyin, only l'fnei Hashem. And hagasha, making contact to the mezbeach, with the kli of the mincha. Dechsev, yigisha l'mezbeach. Ha-mezbeach, the central mezbeach, as opposed to a private mezbeach. Rabbi Daimei Emnicha Babama, he says that a mincha never can be processed in any bama. Rav Sheishis, actually, birds uh, also not. Because they're tied together. According to the opinion that you could bring a mincha and a bama, likewise, you could bring animal, uh, bird carbonus in a bama as well. But otherwise, both not. According to the opinion that you can't bring a mincha and a bama, likewise, ain't Why? Because they're both excluded from the same pasuk. Pasuk speaks about bringing zvachim to a bama. Zvachim tells us. as opposed to Menachis, and likewise, Vacham tells us, Vlayayif is not birds. What other elements are only present in a general Bama, not a private Bama? A kain, the requirement of a kind to do the Avoida. It says, Hashem, only the kain. Only a Mizbech Hashem requires a kain, not a private Mizbech. Likewise, the special garments of a, of a kain, Big Day Sharis. Because the Sharis is It's only meant for the, uh, the Mishkan. It's only meant for a, you know, a central uh, offering place, not a private Bama. And likewise, Ukle Sharis, because that's again exclusive to the public arena. Ashir Shasabamakadish. Rechnechayach, the Rechnechayach Hashem. It's only in front of Hashem 
Do we need Reich Nechayach as opposed to a private Rami? You can actually roast the uh, parts of the animal first before you put them on the Mizbech, even though they don't no longer generate and exude a proper Reich. Mechitza B'damim, the requirement to place blood sometimes on the upper part of the Mizbech, sometimes on the lower part, Mechitza means a dividing line running along the halfway mark of the wall of Mizbech, requiring some carbonus to be on top, some on bottom. Again, that only applies in the central arena. Only the known central Mizbech has that. Rinsing of hands and feet in preparation of the Avoida. Again, that's only by the Mishkan, by the Bamagdoyla, the Chsivu, Karbaso, El Hamizbeach, that's the known central Mizbeach, and Chatsu they rinse. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rami Barcham. Okay, so after this whole long list of distinctions, of differences between the Bamagdoyla and Bamagdana, says Rami Barcham like this. You should know. Loishan. Now we'll go with the uh, Lashan Rashi. Rashi switches the, uh, some of the words in the Gemara. And it reads like this. Loishan. When do we say that all these elements do apply in a Bamagdoyla? That's only when the carbon was meant for that bomb. It was uh, designated for purpose of bringing it to a bomb. Actually, that crop took place in a bomb as well. So all these halachas are applied. But if you have a carbon which was meant for your backyard, that's what you had in mind when you were magdashit. Although you took it, you happen to take it to the central bomb. There's no machitza for the dam. We're not uh, particular about where they apply, apply the dam on the top of the mizbeach, the bottom, and like what well, all the elder halachas that typically apply in a bamagdol do not apply in this case because this carbon per se was meant for bamagtana, was meant for a, a sort of a lower level hakrava, and although it was taken to the bamagdol, it doesn't adopt all the you know uh, the elements of the bamagdol. Moisev Rabba, Rabba has a kasha on this. We have a rice, which once again highlights some differences between a Bamagdoyla and a Bamagtana, Chazav Ashoik, for instance, the parts of the Shlomim that are given to a Kayin, which are Maslach Maitoida, the breads of the Toida given to the Kayin, Lehagen. So all the Allah is regarding doing Tnufa and giving it to the Kayin only apply by Bamagdoyla in the central Bama, but not Veni Hagen, do not apply by Bamagtana, private Bama. So now it sounds like if you're in a Bamagdoyla, all these things are activated. Even if this particular carbon was really labeled, was meant, was intended for Bamaktana, so apparently that's not what really determines. It's where it's being taken, which determines its status, where it's processed. Unlike Rami Bar who says, no, it's about the labeling on the on the carbon, not the actual destination. Says the Gemara, let's revise the Brisa accordingly. Amo will, will, will modify the Brisa to read. All these apply to a carbon which was labeled, which was meant, which was intended for Obama G'dayla, and actually processed there, but, hagen, but do not apply because of Tana and a carbon which was meant initially for Obama G'dayla, irrespective of where it was actually brought, which is exactly like Rambacham. Now, the, actually, there's a different Gersa, Rambacham, there's a different version of his, of his statement, as follows. Amar Rambacham, when do we say that a Baba Sibor, a public Bama, we have all these, uh, you know, extra elements. Ella bizman ba magdoyla. Yekriven ba magdoyla. That's when it says zmana ba magdoyla, which means to say, you can't do a private bama at that time. And this is actually a karm which was processed in the ba magdoyla. Fine. So it has all these ad- added, enhanced, you know, elements of a karm. Avol bizman ba magdoyla. But when bamas are, are okay, are permissible. Ava gav de karvinu ba magdoyla. Even... If he takes a carbon and brings it to the Bamagdala, it was meant for the Bamagdala. He takes a chitze. We do not apply all these enhancements. Interesting point. So, when the Bamites were allowed, even a, a central Bama is downgraded and doesn't have these added elements. Master Rabba, Rabba has a kasha from that brisa. Chaz of Ishaik, right? Jumaslach Maitoida, Nihagan Bamagdala. They apply in a central bama. Very new hagen, but magtana is supposed to be magtana, which sounds like well, in a bama gdeila they all apply, even though bama's katanas are mutter. But in a bama gdeila you have the uh, the added elements. Amen. Well, says the gemara, we can modify the brisa as follows. The hagen is man bama gdeila. Very hagen is man bama katana. All these added elements apply. Is man bama gdeila when the bama gdeila is the only thing in existence. The only active bum, as opposed to bizman bamaktana when the private bumas were 
online, then no bombers have these enhanced features. Okay, so bottom line is, according to Rambach Hamo, in the first Lashem, if the animal was hooked for, for the sake of a Bamas Yachid, right, even if it was taken to a Bamas Tzibar, it will have a, a, a limited type of Akrava. According to the second Lashem, it takes it even further, even in a Bamas Tzibar, even if it was made for the Bamas Tzibar, but if it's a time in history when the Bamas out there are mutter, even the Bamas Tzibar doesn't have the added elements. Says the Gemara, both these versions of Rabbi Bacham will be in disagreement of Rabbi Lazar. Ophir the Lazar, he takes on a different view. Don Rabbi Lazar, Oilas Bamas Yachet, an oil which was set aside for a private bama, right? And he shechted it outside. Sheikh Nisa he takes it inside. Let's say he took it inside. The animal was taken inside after Shechit into the place of the bama Sibra, into the, you know, Mechitzes, called Tua Mechitz Lachodavar. The mechitzas now have sanctified, have sort of absorbed this material, and now it gets upgraded. And all the added elements of Abba Sibir will apply to this carbon as well. And this is in total disagreement to Rambam Chama, who says that, first of all, in the first Lashon, if it was meant for Abba Siyachet, it doesn't have the enhancements. And certainly according to the second Lashon, that when there were Abba Siyachet in existence, there are no enhanced uh, Akrav at all in Abba Sibir. And Rebbe takes it a step further and says, no, even if it was already meant for Abba Siyachet, and started it out there, out there, but he brought it in here, now it gets upgraded, and all the enhancements apply as well. Okay, so let's just uh, stop right here, pick it up tomorrow. Yeah. Let's do a quick recap of today's daf. We discussed when bames were mutter, when bames were asr. We discussed the added elements that we find in the bames tzibur, and when exactly they apply. All the best to you, and atzlochara.